The second um, type of depreciation, which applies to most fixed assets, assets such as equipment, trucks, is called a depreciation under makers, modified accelerated cost recovery systems. Essentially, the way we calculate the annual depreciation, the accumulated depreciation over n years, and the remaining book value um, at the end of the nth year are the same as for the straight line depreciation. The only difference is uh, the depreciation is not the same each year. So it's not the same percentage of original value that would be lost every year. It's a different percentage. Um, the part of the term accelerated refers to the idea that a lot more value is lost early on when the asset is put into use than later on um, towards the end of its economic life. So we don't get like a straight line uh, between the remaining book value points, um, you know, for each year, we get a curve. It's steeper in the beginning, and then it gets flatter and flatter. Um, there are actually different classes, asset classes, um, and they each have, like, their own rule for how much value is lost every year. Then there's something called the mid-year convention, which means that um, all assets are treated as if they're placed in service at mid-year. So not January 1st, but sometime on average, let's say in June, right? Which means that if it's, let's say, a three-year class asset, then the three-year economic life will be, um, you know, covering four calendar years, you know, at least partially, right? And so when you look at, um, you know, an example of these tables that I was mentioning, let's say a three-year property class, a five-year property class, a seven-year property class, you will notice that for um, the three-year class, there are depreciation rates not for three but for four years. For the five-year class, you see depreciation rates over six years. For the seven-year class, we see eight depreciation rates for eight years. Um, so it's always given which property class our asset falls into. Uh, let's say problem may say it's a three-year property class. In general, in real life, uh, this would be special tools for manufacturing, equipment used for research. Five-year property class assets include things like computers, monitors, printers, refrigerators, cars. And seven-year property class uh, includes assets like office furniture and equipment and most industrial equipment. Um, on the irs.gov website, you can find uh, a lot more different types of property classes. But we are not interested in going that deep into this topic. So in this chapter, we will only be referring to Table 10.7 in the textbook, which um, summarizes the percentage of the original value that is lost every year. As an example, Let's say we are buying an asset for um, $10,000, and it's a three-year property class. Year one is 33.33%, which means um, out of that initial value that we had, what was it? I think I said $10,000, right? Out of that number, 33.33% will be lost in the first year. So that would be... $3,333 in the depreciation for year one. The second year depreciation would be 44.44% of the same original book value. So if that was $10,000, then $4,444 is lost during the second year. 
So this is how you calculate the depreciation for each year, one by one. And it's not the same depreciation amount, which was the case with the straight line depreciation method. Let's look at the same example we had earlier for the straight line depreciation method and change one thing about it. This time, the equipment that we will be buying will depreciate according to the three-year property class under makers. Uh, the rest of the, of the information is the same as before. A company is buying a new piece of equipment for $12,000. Its economic life is three years. The company is planning to sell it in two years for $3,000. The tax rate is 34%. What will be the after-tax salvage value? Um, using the table 10.7 from the textbook with depreciation rates for different years for different property classes, um, we would look up the table for the three-year property class under makers, right? And it says that during the first year, 33.33% uh, .33 of $12,000 would be lost. That's $4,000. During the second year, 44.44% of $12,000 would be lost during the second year, right? Which is $5,333. Then 14.82% of $12,000 will be lost as depreciation during the third year, and so on. We don't um, really need to go uh, all the way through year three and four. We can actually uh, only do years one and two because at the end of the second year, this equipment would be sold, right? Um, so what do we need to calculate after finding the annual depreciations for years one and two? We add them up. That's the accumulated depreciation over the first two years. So $4,000 over the first year plus $5,333 over the second year equals $9,333 over the first two years. When we subtract $9,333 from the initial book value of $12,000, we get the remaining book value at the end of the second year, $2,667. And notice how the value drops unevenly over the um, you know, economic life of this equipment. So there are different um, you know, drops over different years. What do we do next with this information? We then uh, can calculate how much money we get to put in our pocket when we sell the equipment after two years. We will be selling it for $3,000, which is given, and that's more than the remaining book value at that time, $2,667. This is the situation that we call a tax liability because it's like you're selling something for more than it's worth. You're selling it at a profit. You'll be taxed on that. And um, I also had an explanation of one, on one of the earlier slides uh, about how this implies that um, the company has been paying too little in taxes over the two years. So how much liability are we going to be facing? Uh, we are going to be paying a tax on this difference between the selling price and the uh, actual book value. Um, we take the difference, $3,000 minus $2,667, and multiply that difference by the tax rate of 34%. This gives us the tax liability of $113.22. We then need to subtract it from the $3,000 selling price. And when we do that, we will get the correct estimate for how much money we will get to keep in, uh, to ourselves or the after-tax salvage value. And that will equal 
78 cents.